Hey, Michael. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming over. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me over. The, the, the tea is delicious. Yeah. I, I always like to sit down and have a nice cup of tea. Yeah. It's very pleasant. I feel like we're forgetting something though. What, what would that be? I mean, where else could we need to be right now? Something happening right now? Oh, is this the Open JS World event now? Oh, geez, you're right. We're supposed to be on, on stage. We're doing a keynote. We, yes, be, we better get uh, cracking on that. Okay. Let's, let's head let's over there it. right now. Okay. okay. So I guess before oh, we get started, we should probably introduce ourselves. Sure. Um, I'll go first. I'm, I'm Joe Seppi. I uh, work for IBM as an open source engineer. And uh, the great thing is that a lot of the work that I do is in the community, um, in, in the Node.js projects and uh, with the OpenJS Foundation. And I'm Michael Dawson, um, IBM's community lead for Node.js. That means I get to spend, like Joe, a lot of time working out with the community, but also working with our internal teams who are you know, building tools to uh, help you deploy efficiently with Node.js. Um, teams that are deploying, you know, making large scale Node.js deployments and just, uh, you know, supporting our customers and internal teams who are, who are using Node.js. So today, so, Michael, yeah, who, who, who says elephants can't dance with Node.js and JavaScript, Michael? Well, I, you know, I sometimes hear that people think IBM is a big, big company with like a lot of history and, you know, has a hard time sort of changing ship or, or getting into some of the new technologies. Yeah, a hard time. So what's the challenge? Um, really, you know, the challenge is, is that, uh, you know, sometimes that perception gets in the way of people engaging. And uh, just a sec, sorry. <laughs> there we go. Got the challenge. So sometimes, you know, it gets that perception gets in the way of people engaging. And it's really a missed opportunity because, you know, IBM is doing a lot of things in the Node and JavaScript front, in the community, um, you know, internally. And I think, you know, if people really knew all the things that we're doing, that, that, percep that perception wouldn't really have stuck around for quite as long as it has. Yeah, I agree. I, I, think of, uh, I think of it as like a big ship. You know, it takes a little while to turn a big ship, but the big ships do turn. And, um, you know, IBM isn't great at tooting its own horn. But uh, we, we really do a lot in the Node.js uh, space for sure. Yeah, so I think if you look at, you know, the reality of what happens is, you know, IBM is really very active in the open source communities, um, you know, in the Node.js uh, project, the OpenJS Foundation work in the CPC. We've done a lot of work in terms of making sure that uh, Node runs on IBM platforms. As I mentioned, we use Node in some very large applications internally. Um, we're building great places for you to deploy your Node.js applications and even working on tooling that, you know, when you're doing your initial development that will help you be more efficient um, and help you make sure that when your application does get to production, it's, it's going to be successful. And then finally, we, you know, we spend a lot of time working with our customers, both internal and external. Um, you know, we have whole groups like the, the, the IBM Cloud Garage that are, that are oriented towards helping customers come and use new technology and solve new problems. So really, you know, we're, we're, we're involved in all those different areas. Yeah, and I think, I think that this isn't just Node.js as well. You know, this is a variety of open source tools. IBM really um, builds on open source and has been involved in open source for, for many years. Um, you know, Node.js, but also containers. Um, we, we have a lot of work that we do in that space as well. Um, really deeply involved in, in open source. Yeah, I know, very actively involved in CNCF. And, you know, I think we were one of the earlier contributors to, to even the Linux Foundation. So it's been a really long-standing long standing contribution involvement. And I think it's just that perception of, you know, a company that's been around a long time that is maybe slowing down, you know, people under, people seeing the, 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 the way that IBM is acting here. Mm-hmm. So one of the things we meant we talked about was the open source contribution. So maybe um, you know we should talk a little bit about the OpenJS Foundation. I know you're acting as the chair, and uh, it would be good to to know a little bit more what's going on there. Yeah, sure. So um, 
uh, IBM's been deeply involved in the OpenJS Foundation. We had a number of folks uh, play a role in the merger of the Node.js Foundation and the JS Foundation, um, and we were, you know, involved in, in both of those foundations uh, before the merger. Um, I'm the chair of the Cross Project Council. We have a couple other uh, members in the Cross Project Council that are IBMers, uh, including Michael and, and a couple others. Uh, but in addition to that, we have a number of projects that we're, we're very involved in um, as part of the foundation, uh, including Node.js, of course, but also Node Red. Um, the, the creator of Node Red is uh, Nick O'Leary. He's, he's on my team as well. Uh, and also Chris Hiller, who is the lead maintainer for Mocha, is, is on, uh, we're, we're all on the same team. Uh, so we talk pretty regularly and, and meet regularly to, um, to, to advance the work of the, of the foundation. Uh, through the Cross Project Council, as well as the board. And I know you're on the board, Michael, so I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I mean, really, I see our involvement is like grassroots in the projects, like you said, to working on the Cross Project Council to help with the governance and help bring new projects in. But we're also involved in the board. Todd Moore has been the, the chair of the board for, for a while, and he's been a really big supporter of Node.js as well. This year, I also had the opportunity and privilege to serve as the Node.js uh, board representative for on behalf of the Node.js project. And, you know, so I've been able to be involved and, and, and contribute at that level as well, which is great. Um, you know, so overall, you know, I think the OpenJS Foundation is really important because it's the place where we hope people will come together to collaborate on JavaScript and, and Node.js. Um, and to, to sort of give it give a place where people can come and do that. Along those lines, like one of the things I'm excited about is, you know, I've made a proposal for collaboration spaces. And the concept there is to provide a place for people to come together and collaborate under the, the OpenJS Foundation, getting support with things like, you know, uh, um, GitHub repos, use of our, our Slack channels and Zooms and all those things, those small things which can actually make a, a pretty big difference. Um, without having to be a project. So, you know, today the, the foundation already supports projects, but this would let, you know, non-projects, you know, have a, a, people come together to collaborate on areas under the foundation that are not necessarily tied to a specific project. So for example, if people have an interest on security, they could come together and work on things that are important to JavaScript security in a collaboration space. Yeah, infrastructure, there are a variety of places that I think could be great collaboration spaces. Yep, and, and hopefully um, the so end result is more people getting involved and, and coming out to participate. Yeah, so what what kind of uh, work are, are we doing within IBM sort of around some of those spaces that, uh, that, that IBM's involved in? So one of the big ones is, is the Node.js community, of course. You mentioned some other projects in the CPC, but Node.js is, is one where we, we're significantly involved. And Due to our you know, long history of working with enterprise customers, our focus is often on uh, enterprise type requirements. Um, we were involved from the very beginning in terms of uh, putting together the LTS release process um, to support stable and predictable releases. We now know that we're gonna get uh, you know, a new current every April and October, and that in October that you know, the previous current uh, from April is going to become an LTS release. So we know that, you know, we have that predictability as well as we know that we have, you know, 30 months of support once the release goes LTS. Diagnostics is another one that, you know, we're, we're very active in. It, that's important to be able to support our customers. When you're in production, you want to have the best tools available. Node being a little bit of a younger language still has some, some work to be done on that front. So that's one of the areas that, you know, we're definitely active in and working in. Jaris Punatel is helping to lead an effort there on um, putting together some best practices and you know, then taking those best practices and making sure we have good tools in the Node ecosystem to support them. Security is, is obviously one that's always important to people. And you know, we've been involved in the security working group, helping to define things like the security processes um, and helping to manage the security releases. There's a lot of work just pulling together all the different pieces of the puzzle to get one of those releases out. So we've been pretty active there. Performance is of course important because everybody wants to get the most out of their, heart, their hardware that they're buying. We uh, have some, you know, 
as, as I mentioned, you know, IBM has some large enterprise customers and, and many times those, those customers run in, in a number of different languages, a number of different countries. So internationalization is important. So that's an area that we've been involved in as well. And then finally, it's just important that we have good quality releases. So we, we help with the code quality um, efforts, things like the code coverage site, uh, other aspects of the safety net, like um, Sigem was originally contributed by an, an IBMer. And just generally yeah. doing, you know, helping out with the infrastructure to make all that stuff good. Yeah. Yeah, and we have a number of collaborators in the, the Node.js uh, platform as well, right? Yeah, I think it's a recognition of, you know, how much we contribute that we have 10 core collaborators, mm -hmm. people who can review and land commits, as well as three people on the technical steering committee who, you know, help to figure out the the edge cases where the collaborators can't come to an agreement on their own. And it's it's great that we can be, uh, you know, contributing and helping to lead on, on that front. And you mentioned uh, releases earlier. Um, I know uh, Beth uh, manages the releases for the platform. Isn't she... Uh, I believe she's going to be interviewed by the foundation for this event. Yeah, we there there should be like a featured article on her. So if you're interested, you can you can go check that out for sure. And then she has a talk, I, I believe, as well, right? Yeah, her talk. Uh, she's talking about some great work that's being done in the package maintenance uh, working group along the lines of you know helping uh, maintainers to be able to test not not the same as Sigem, but something along the same lines. Um, in terms of being able to test dependencies, uh, people who depend on your modules and, and packages. So anyway, the, the, that should be an interesting talk as well. Do we have any other talks uh, on the foundation on the event? Uh, I think you're giving one, aren't you? Oh yes, I am. I, I am. <laughs> That's true. Um, is anyone else? Yeah, we have Chris Heller is is giving a talk on tooling. I uh, moderated a security panel. Um, and I think there's a talk uh, by um, on Node Red as well. Great, great. Yeah, excellent. So one one of the other things, uh, you know, this is in the in the community, but also that's kind of important is, um, you know, we have put a fair amount of work to make sure that Node.js runs on IBM's platform. So anything from you know Linux on Z, Linux on P, AIX. Um, or even IBM I, where Jesse Gorzinski, who, who does a great job advocating for open source on IBM I, tells me it's like up to 25% of our customers are using Node on IBM I now. And it's, it's actually, when I go to the conferences, it's just great to see how excited people are about Node.js in, in that environment where, you know, they're, they're in businesses, maybe they're supporting manufacturing or some other types of factories. And it's, it's great to see them starting to use Node.js for all that kind of work as well. Node.js on the mainframe. And that's right. And mainframe is, is another area where, you know, people, there's significant interest of people starting to run, you know, the right workloads uh, to get the advantages that you, you do with Node. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, internal use of Node.js as well. Um, <clears throat> multiple teams, multiple projects, uh, a, a variety of ways where we're implementing Node internally um, and a very vibrant uh, community through Slack channels, um, an assortment of them. I think the Node.js channel has 1,600 people or more um, and some, some major deployments as well, right, Michael? Yeah, oh, definitely. And on that major deployment front, there were a couple that we wanted to share today just to show you the scope of some of the deployments that we have in, in, in IBM. The first one is the IBM Cloud Console. So if you've ever gone to use uh, the IBM Cloud, it provides the UI. Um, and this lets you know you create those different services, like whether you're creating your Kubernetes clusters, uh, virtual servers, bare metal machines, Cloud Foundry type applications, servers, serverless applications. The Cloud UI is, is a Node.js application supporting all of that. It also provides sort of a, a plug-in framework um, in that when we want to bring a new service, because the IBM Cloud provides services in addition to those sort of uh, foundational components like OpenShift and Kubernetes, um, we have teams who want to deliver services through the cloud, and it provides a plug-in type architecture where they can easily take advantage of things like registration, onboarding, access management, billing, and usage without having to, to rewrite that all. And it's all written in Node.js, which is great. 
Yeah, that plugin that plugin approach is really smart. It allows a lot of uh, teams uh, to 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 take advantage of the platform. Yeah, and, and you know, as we can see, there's over 50 teams who've taken advantage of that. So that just gives you a, an idea of how much use there is, and that we have 50 different teams who've just contributed, uh, you know, Node.js applications to the IBM cloud. The, the the application itself is over 90 microservices. It's deployed to Kubernetes, mm -hmm. and it's distributed over 10 different, uh, you know, geographically load balanced clusters across the world. So really a, a big node application that, that we run 24 seven. Yeah, the IBM Cloud Console is a great example. I think uh, the weather company is another one, right? Yeah, the weather company is, is the next one in that um, you may have even gone there to check your weather. You can get the seven day forecast. Um, you can also, you know, it has a, a whole bunch of APIs, so it can help you make your application better by incorporating weather data. And in a lot of cases, you know, that can really add value. For example, if you've got, um, you know, a site that helps people pick when they want to plant seeds or anything else re related to growing um, food or, or plants, it'd be great to be able to give them insight in terms, you know, maybe when it's going to be a good time to do things based on the weather or not. And, yeah, I, I was a part of a, um, a proof of concept application that we built that was a, a logistics company. And we used uh, weather uh, APIs to um, know when a storm was happening or going to happen and reroute um, uh, shipping routes uh, to accommodate for these sorts of storms and such. Yeah, that stuff's really, really, really important. Yeah. Looking back to the application itself, again, it's another big Node.js application. It's, it serves billions of locations, you know, all sorts of cities, zip codes, internationalized. We mentioned internationalization before, 60 languages, 230 different locales. And it's deployed in four different regions, seven Kubernetes clusters, 400, more than 400 worker nodes, dozen services, which can be like maybe three replicas or 100 replicas. Again, all running on the IBM cloud 24-7. So, you know, another really big Node.js application that, you know, IBM runs and operates, um, you know, just showing that what you can do with Node.js and, and how we're using it. Yeah, let, let's take a moment and talk about um, deploying Node.js on IBM Cloud. Right. We, we just wanted to mention a couple of ways you can deploy Node.js. Um, you know, one is the IBM Public Cloud and the other one is IBM Cloud Pack for applications if you don't necessarily want to move all of your workload up, up to the cloud. In terms of the IBM Cloud, um, you know, it, it's, it provides a whole bunch of services, sort of foundational services. So things like OpenShift, Kubernetes, serverless, you know, but in addition to that, it loads in a whole bunch of services. So if you need a database, you can get a service for that. If you need to connect to IoT devices, there'll be a service for that. If you need to send emails, there'll be a service for that. So it, it's broadly, you know, has the data centers all over the world. Um, and really provides you all the components that you'll need to deploy uh, your Node.js application successfully and scale as you need to um, across the world. Yeah, and using the uh, IBM Cloud Pack for applications is a great way to do that. Yeah, it's, it's you know, if you don't want to move all your applications up to the cloud, the way I look at IBM Cloud Pack for applications is there's lots of great projects in open source. And I could go and collect all those together myself, but it's a little bit like building the car by yourself. Do you want to go out, buy all the parts, source all the parts, put it together? That's probably going to take you a lot of time and effort just to get to that point. And once you've done that, you're, you're probably on your own for support because you've built your own custom bespoke um, you know, infrastructure. IBM Cloud Pack for Applications builds on those tried and tested uh, open source applications, but brings them all together into a nicely packaged um, you know, uh, offering. So it includes OpenShift, things like Tekton, Runtimes, and packages them all together as an integrated piece you can buy and then get support for. So if you don't want to move all your, your applications up to the public cloud, IBM Cloud Pack for Applications is a great option for, you know, having a cloud-like infrastructure, being able to deploy cloud-native applications in your own environment or some mix where it's a, it's a hybrid you know, some things locally and some things up in the cloud as well. Yeah, and you, you mentioned support as well, right? Yeah, so, you know, once you get your application to production, it's of course important uh, to many people to be able to have a trusted partner that can that can help you out. 
Um, not everybody has enough has as much time um, and resources to be able to be involved in the Node.js community. So be able to like you know if you find a bug, contribute a PR, get it reviewed, get it landed, and that's something that you know IBM can do for our customers because of our involvement there. Uh, we have a we have a number of different options because you know depending whether you're uh, running in the IBM cloud, um, you're running on Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, you know uh, through our Red Hat partnership or you're you know deploying on your own in the mainframe you're going to need different types of support so we have a number of different support offerings and you can find out more information about those at that link and speaking of finding out more information to learn more about all the stuff that we've been talking about you can go to developer.ibm.com slash technology slash node.js uh, it's right on the home page of the developer.ibm.com site as well and uh, there are a number of articles and tutorials and deployment options and uh, all, all the things that we've been talking about are available there as well. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of great content. If you're interested what, uh, you know, any of those, a number of our uh, collaborators are doing, we have a video series that talks, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the, the people about what they're doing in the community and, you know, a wealth of, of, of articles on things like security and how to do deployments and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, at this the, point... Um, I was just going to say the, the weather company um, uh, architecture and deployment is uh, highlighted there as well as on the OpenJS blog. Yeah, no, that's definitely a great article. So thanks for everybody for watching. I think, unfortunately, our time time is up. And thanks, Joe, for sharing some tea with me. Yeah, I'm glad that we remember this was happening because uh, that would have been embarrassing. Yeah, I know. I, I'd hate to miss that. But uh, anyway, thanks, everybody. And hopefully we'll see you all virtually at the rest of the conference. Yeah, enjoy the event.